Introduced with Nutanix Files 3.8, Smart Disaster Recovery, or SmartDR for short, provides a native files remote replication option, giving you several benefits. SmartDR gives you share level replication policies, so you can define your replication frequency on a share by share basis. SmartDR also replicates between active file servers, which allows read-only access to your remote data and reduces failover times. Further, you can use any supported hardware platform for remote replication in DR, regardless of storage density. Let's have a closer look and see a demo of Nutanix Files SmartDR. SmartDR is managed from Prism Central, and so I'm connected to a Prism Central instance that you can see here. Within this instance, I've already made sure I've updated through LCM to Files Manager 2.0. And when you upgrade to Files Manager 2.0, what you'll notice is that when you go to the Files option under Services, with the previous version of Files Manager, you could see your registered file servers, you could see their events and alerts. But with the latest version, 2.0, you'll see this data protection menu here. So if you don't see this data protection menu in your PC instance, but you do see the file servers, you likely just need to go down to uh, LCM under administration and go ahead and update your files manager to the latest release. But if we go back to the files page, what you'll discover is data protection here. And the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is make sure that the file servers that you expect to be your source and target are available. Um, you can find them under the file servers page here. In my environment, I have two clusters. Uh, they happen to be single node and two single node file servers, FSCL2 and FSCL4. Um, so you do need to register uh, with this first version, all of the instances that will be participating in the replication to the same Prism Central instance. I'm going to set up a replication relationship between FSCL2 and FSCL4. I have some shares already created. You need to make sure that you have shares uh, in the environment. If you uh, if you need to do that, you can actually manage directly from, from Prism Central. You can do a link and launch into the file server page. Um, I've already done that here, but if I you know tab over, it'll bring you right to the file server page of either, in this case, CL4, or I just tap again over to CL2. Okay, so let's go take a look at policy. So you'll, first thing you'll do, come here and say new policy. And what that will do is discover all your file servers. So again, I have CL2 and CL4. For this relationship, I'm gonna replicate from two to four. It'll then query that partic particular file server. It'll find all the shares associated with it. It found the two that I have created. For this particular policy, I think I only want to replicate one of the shares at a given RPO. So I'll go ahead and uncheck SDR2. I'll just go with SDR1, done. In this case, I want to use our lowest RPO. So down to 10 minutes, if you try to go below, um, today it'll say you can't do that. It must be greater than or equal to 10. So go ahead and set that to 10. You can specify to start replicating as soon as you create this policy, or you can say, hey, you know what? I want the first full replication to occur within a different time window. So I can say, hey, start this at a given time. Once that first full replication is done, it's then going to replicate based on snapshots with this definition of your RPO. So it'll occur every 10 minutes. So this is really just for the initial replication or seeding. In this environment, I'm not worried about the time of day where I'm creating this policy. So I'll go ahead and say start immediately. And then you need to specify a target. I've only got one target, FSCL4, and that's really all there is to it. I now have a base policy. I just need to give it a name. In this case, because it's only one share, I'll call it the share name, SDR1. And if I want to create a description, I can do that as well. Don't really need it here, so I'll go ahead and say create. All right, so I've given it a few seconds. It doesn't take very long at all. Uh, you can then go to the protected file servers menu after you create the policy, and you'll see a relationship. You'll see FSCL2 replicating to FSCL4 um, on this particular source file server. I can go ahead and click on it and you can see the deeper relationship. So you can see all the shares and policies associated with the, with the given replication. Now this is the initial full synchronization. So if I go to replication jobs, um, you should see that running for a given period of time. Um, so it's still going through that protection uh, policy process. So what I'll do is I'll fast forward the presentation to when we're in a steady state. All right, so we're in a steady state of replication. I've got one full cycle in, uh, you know, with the current RPO. So you can see that here. So I'm going to be replicating 
every 10 minutes. There's very little changes occurring, but if you, if you want to see each replication job, so every 10 minutes, this is going to occur now, I can come into the replication jobs themselves. I can click on a given job and I can see the status. I can see whether it succeeded, see that it's fully complete. If it was in progress, I could see the percentage that was complete. I can see the network throughput that was required, how much data was synced and so on. So you get a full view of a given replication cycle and you'll see that for every cycle, you know, the full cycle and then all the incrementals that occur once you're in that steady state. Now, the next thing you might do from Prism Central is do a failover. I'm replicating one direction right now from, from CL2 to CL4. I could actually create another policy and replicate back the other direction if I wanted as well. So I could create a policy in CL4, select a different share, create a different policy and replicate back the other way. So you can create bi-directional replication if you need to. But in this case, we're gonna actually do a failover. And when you, when you choose failover, you get a few options. You can choose a planned failover or an unplanned failover. Uh, with a planned failover, you'll get the option to create a reverse replication policy. So this means that we're gonna fail over the persona of the primary file server from the production or, or active site over to the recovery target site. So essentially file server four, it's associated IP address, the file server VMs and so on are going to take over the persona of FSCL2, okay? And because it's a planned failover, I'm gonna go ahead and create a reverse replica replication policy so I can fail back uh, as quickly as possible. If I make any changes, the synchronization will be, will be quicker, I'll, I'll be up to date and so on. And I'll go ahead and choose a 10 minute policy. Now you'll see when I, when I go to the next page, it's gonna ask for credentials so that it can update the Active Directory account for FSCL2. Specifically, what it's gonna do is change the service principal names associated with that account to point to the file server VMs that represent the, the cluster in the other site. And then the same is gonna to need to happen for the DNS entries. I'm going to need to point the FSCL2 name to the IP address of what is going to be my failover target, which is at FSCL4. Now, if you don't have the credentials to do the failover, you're gonna to need to update DNS manually, or if you don't have the credentials for Active Directory that would have control over the computer account, you're gonna to need to do that manually as well. And also keep in mind that when it comes to uh, DNS, it does need to be a Windows-based DNS for this to work. If you're using a third party, again, you're gonna to have to do those DNS updates manually. So I'll go ahead and do a failover. And what you'll notice as this proceeds is the, because it's a plain failover, you'll see the active side of the relationship FSCL2 become standby and the standby side of the relationship become active. Now the idea between the primary location and the recovery location still stays the same. So FSCL4 is still considered the recovery location and it, and it has a reverse replication policy. So that makes it easy when failing back, for example, all we have to do is delete the reverse replication policy, which will occur automatically. And then the existing policy that we had created as a part of the first step of the demo will, will be applied again. I don't need to recreate that policy. It's already saved and it'll be there. So this should take a, a minute or two. So I'll go ahead and fast forward the presentation so we can see the failover. Okay, the failover completed and we can go ahead and take a look at the failover task. You can see the full process took about four minutes. Um, in reality, the share was the share and the failover was actually accessible, you know, within that time period. You know, just the, the completion and cleanup and some of the other operations needed to occur. But you can see that it's much faster than AOS-based protection domains, which could take 15 to 20 minutes once you click go. Um, so you're getting a fa faster RTO and, and faster failover time. Now, if I go ahead and look at those shares within. Uh, Prism Element. So if we go to FSCL4, for example, you can see that, you know, for this particular share, SDR1, it's now active, read right within this site. If I look at that same share on the original, original source cluster, FSCL2, you can see it now has this little icon next to it indicating that it's read only. Now, because we did a planned failover, we actually moved the persona of FSCL2 
over to FSCL4. And let me let me just show you what that looks like real quick. So I'm, I'm connected to my Active Directory here. Um, so you can see the two computer accounts, FSCL2 and FSCL4. So if I go ahead and look at the service principal and, and entries for those computer accounts, so for example, I can do it, set SPN-L, FSCL2, and you'll see that there's there's nothing registered. So there's no um, there's no redirection, there's no host entries to represent the file server VMs for that for that computer account because they're no longer associated with uh, with that site. Instead, they're associated with FSCL4. So for example, if I go to CL4, you can see I have not only the SPNs for the CL4 cluster, I now have the SPNs for the CL2 cluster. The same is going to be true for, for DNS. You know, so if I look at DNS, if I look at the FSCLs, and go ahead and do a refresh on this real quick, reload. You can see that FSCL2 and FSCL4 actually have the same IP address now. So if you try to connect to CL2, it'll actually go to the CL4 cluster. And then for determining what file server VM to go to for CL2, you can see that it'll use you know, these, these entries. So that's really what's occurring on the failover. Um, the domain account for CL2 still exists, but the clients are actually pointed to CL4 and then redirected based on DFS referrals, uh, as you can see here. Now, we, we precede all the file server VMs um, just in case the cluster grows. In, in reality, this is just a one node cluster, so there's really only this one, um, this one node per se, uh, but you get the idea. All right, now if I want to go ahead and fail back, go ahead and go back to the file server page, make things easy. You can also highlight it. So it shows up at the top, go ahead and do that. So fail back is just as easy. We'll click fail back. Again, you're going to want those credentials to update Active Directory. Also update DNS and go ahead and say use the same credentials. Next. And you can see it's going to go ahead and, and delete the reverse replication policy. We don't need it anymore. And it maintain the previous policy we created and it's going to reactivate that in the proper direction from the original primary to the original recovery or standby side. All right, so we have fell back and I'll go ahead and fast forward for when this completes. All right, so we're back. Again, took a roughly about the same amount of time to fail back. You can see my primary location is back to being active. Covered location is back to being standby. Like I showed you before, if we if we check out Active Directory and if I look at the service principal names of FSCL2, they're now all back. So again, we're only using one file server VM in this environment, but if you ever scaled out um, or had a larger instance, all those entries are, are ready to go. And then similar to in DNS, you can see that CL2 is back to its original IP address. So that is now accessible again via its name. Similar to what I showed you before, if we look at the actual fire file server pages, um, you can see on CL4, it's back to being read only, but it is accessible because CL4 is still a standalone cluster. So I can go to FSCL4 slash SDR1 and get access to a read-only share. And if I go back to the original cluster, CL2, you can see str one is back to being read, write, and available. So I can really access the share on either side at this point, um, you know, back to that original replication configuration, read-only in my standby and read, write in my source. All right, hopefully that gives you a good idea of files DR, and we'll talk to you down the road.